Hi, my name is Sides, and in this Splice Skills lesson, we're gonna be going over Logic Pro tips and tricks. Let's get started. Logic Pro has this really cool feature called Strip Silence, which basically works as a simulation of a noise gate. So it will analyze the audio, and when it sees long gaps, it will actually cut them without affecting the overall main signal. So let's take this drum loop I have here, and I'm gonna press Control X. This window pops up, and you can see Logic is gonna cut all the quiet spaces so they're individually on their own. You can adjust the threshold if you want to make it more sensitive or less sensitive as it sounds, but where it was was pretty good. Now I'm just gonna press OK, and bam, it cut it all for you. So if we zoom in, you don't have to worry about Logic Pro like deleting information. Like let's say it cut too much this side, you could just drag him and the information is still there. So it's a really cool way when you're working with vocals and you're singing and maybe there's some, some click that happened in between your lines, you can just quickly cut them out. Or if you're using a drum progression and it has maybe a kick hitting and a snare hitting, it'll separate the audio for you so you can adjust it as you want. So let's say I wanna add another kick here. I can just hold down option and then just move it there. It's so much you can do with it. So really cool one, control X, strip silence. Tip number two, this is a really great way to quickly change the pitch of an audio or a MIDI. So let's listen to this MIDI. And let's say we want to quickly transpose it up a semitone. All you have to do is highlight it, press option arrow key up, and it is up one semitone. and you could just keep moving it to whatever pitch you need it at. And you could do the same thing with audio. It's the same way. So let me just show you. Here's an audio track. Option, arrow key up, and it's changing the pitch. So you can just hear it. So as I raise it up, you can see it's raising the pitch of even the drop sample. So let's say I wanna quickly raise it an octave. All you have to do is press Shift, Option, arrow key up. Let's listen. Let's say I want to bring it down an octave. You do shift, option, arrow key down. And let's go down one more octave. Shift, option, arrow key down. Let's hear what it sounds like. So this is super useful and you can also use this key command right in the piano roll. So let's say I'm going shift, option, arrow key up. There's a, an octave. Shift, option, arrow key down. It's back. Or just option, arrow key up or down to raise it by the semitone. Tip number three. So, this one is really cool. <laughs> Let's say you get a sample or an audio from someone and you don't know what tempo it's at, you have no idea. All you have to do is take the audio track and press Command Option Plus T. And it'll actually detect the tempo of the audio region. And it gives you all this information here. So, you can see that it's at 128, half time. Really useful information. I love this tip. Tip number four. So let's say I wanna move this region to this track. All you have to do is highlight the region you want to move, highlight the track you wanna move it to, make sure it's highlighted, and then press Shift, Control, T, and then bam, it just moves it for you. This is super useful when you're working with big projects and you wanna quickly shift things around. Tip number five. Let me find a drum loop from Splice. Perfect. So I'm just gonna download this really quickly. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag it over here and I'm gonna select Drum Machine Designer. And look, it put each transient on a separate note on the MIDI keyboard. So if I was to play it out, pretty cool, right? Okay, and for the last tip. So let's say you wanna access your VST really quickly. Instead of having to go over here, clicking on here, going to your instrument and loading it. So all you have to do is press Command, double click, and it just pops right up. This is a shortcut that's right in Logic. So let's say I wanna open up the sampler. I just do Command, double click, and bam, here it is. 
So this is what Logic looks like when you first open it up. And I'm gonna change some of the settings that I think work a little bit better. You can go over to the top here where it says Logic Pro, go down to preferences, and then they're all here. Or one of my favorite shortcuts is command comma, and then preferences just pops up. It's really important to click this advanced tab and make sure all of these are checked off. I'm pretty sure when you first download Logic, they're not going to be, and we need these. So make sure they're checked off. Over here, there's two tools. What I wanna do is I wanna add a third tool. So I'm gonna go over to general, then I'm gonna go over to editing, and then right here where it says right mouse button, I'm gonna go down and say is assignable to a tool. So now you can see there are three toolboxes. So basically the first click with your mouse is gonna be whatever tool you set it to, which is this pointer tool. The second one you can access by holding down command and that's set on the marquee tool. And now the third tool is the scissors, which is the right click tool. This is super useful because let me drag in an audio or MIDI track. So I drag it in here. And now let's say I wanna cut right there. All I have to do is hover and you can just press a right click and then it just cuts it for you. This is super useful when it comes to editing. So you can put it on any third tool you want and you can just see all the different options here. But really, I just use it for the scissor tool. For the second tool, just hold down Command, and then you can see the marquee tools here. And there's a bunch of things you could do with the marquee tool, like if I just grab that option, and then I just drag that part over, and it just clips it over for me. And now we're gonna open up Preferences again. So, Command, Comma, Open Up Preferences. We're already here on General and Editing, and now I wanna do Fade Tool Click Zones. So, click that. And now you can hover over just the top right corner and you can just add in a fade. Or you can hover over the top left corner and just add in a fade. So I'm gonna find something in Splice a little bit more melodic so you can hear how this feature works. Let's take a listen here quickly. Perfect, so I'm just gonna drag in these lo-fi melodic chops. And a quick bonus tip is that if you hover on the bottom right corner and press option, that little icon appears and you can just drag it right on the grid. So it just puts it right on the grid for you. So now going back to our original tip, the fade click. So basically all you have to do is hover over the top right corner and then you see that icon appears and you can just drag it. So here's what it sounds like with that on. So it fades to silence, right? And this is what it sounds like without it. Oh, and this is also really useful because you hear how when we didn't add it, it just clicks at the end. So the fade tool is really useful even if you do just slightly. No click. So let's listen to the beginning. You can also do the same thing without it. So if you just hover over the top left corner, there's the icon, drag, and let's listen. So this is a really cool tool to smooth out some sounds. Another cool thing you can do with this, if you press control click, you can select speed up. So let's listen to how that sounds. Pretty cool, right? We can also do it at the end. So I'm just gonna hover again, drag it over, then do control click and slow down. Let's listen to it. Okay, now let's open up preferences one more time. Now we're gonna go over to display. We're gonna go over to tracks and here are some settings that I'd like to change. Every producer has their favorite way and their favorite tools to produce. So if you're using a trackpad or a magic mouse, this button is really useful. Let me show you using this magic mouse. So I'm gonna click it off. And then if you just hold two fingers, you can see the bar as you're going at where we're at. So that's pretty useful for editing and producing. Okay, let's go back to preferences. Press command comma, open up preferences. We're in display, we're in tracks. And now I wanna set the track color that when I open up different audio tracks or software tracks, it's gonna color code it for me. So you can go over here, track color, push down, and then you can decide if you wanna do auto assign 24 colors or auto assign 96 colors. 
let's go with 96 colors. And then I also like to select region color to be as track color. I'll show you what this does. Basically, when you open up the mixer, you will see that there's a color here. If you do them individually, you have to set them both, but I want them to both be the same. So it's just easier to visualize. Okay, so I'm gonna X out of here. And now if we go up to this button and say, add new tracks, just for this example, let's add 10 tracks. Doesn't matter if it's software or audio. Click create. Just for the purposes of this, I'm gonna copy and paste it so you can see the different colors. And it did it for us in rainbow colors. Super useful. And just so you can see what I mean with the mixer, you can just press Command 2 to open up the mixer and it auto did the colors for us. So let's say you want all of these tracks to be pink because these are all the background vocals. So what you can do is press Shift, click, Option C, and then let's select this pink and there you have it, they're all pink. So this is useful just to group instrument, vocals, drums, just so you can easily navigate through your project when mixing or composing. For this one, I'm actually going to record in a piano part. So let me just record in some chords really quickly. Nothing fancy. Cool. Okay, so if we play in the middle of the chord, nothing happens, no sound comes out, which is really annoying, right? So what you can do now is we wanna open up project settings. So this is different than preferences. So you can go over to file and then go over to project settings, or you can press option P and it opens up logic settings. So now we're gonna go over to MIDI, chase, and make sure this button is clicked off, notes. Now let's listen and hear what happens. Did you guys catch that? If you play in the middle of a MIDI chord, it actually plays. So this is a super useful setting. I hope you found my Logic Pro tips useful. Again, my name is Sides and I'll see you next time. Stay creative.